Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris. Today we're going to be looking at doing a couple of modifications to the Skywatcher Heritage 150p. These little modifications also apply to the 130p and the One Sky 130p. And it's basically we're going to be doing a little modification to the focuser to take the play out of that using PTFE tape. And we'll be addressing this whole open area here where light, straight light can get in and reduce contrast and also form dew on the secondary mirror. First modification, we'll be using this PTFE tape. And what this is, it's plumber's tape and it's for sort of sealing up gaps in pipes so the water doesn't leak. But it clings like really well to things. So if we undo this thread, and then we can just simply wrap some of this round. I'm just going to pull that off and just make sure that's stuck really nicely around that thread. As you can probably see, that kind of just stays attached to the thread. With a bit of luck, I've got just the right amount on the when I thread this back in. It's going to take some of that play out the focuser. It's going to work that backwards and forwards a bit just to bed it in. But that's uh, quite noticeably improved things, I'd say. I mean, I don't mind having a little bit of friction as long as we get rid of this wobble. Because the problem I was having was when you focus an eyepiece, this is actually quite far out. And this was wobbling like crazy. But now there's no, well, there's hardly any play compared to what it was without the PTFE tape. Anyway. That is, that's as simple as that mod is, really. Okay, so these are the ingredients that I'm going to use to build the light shroud. We've got the, we've got A2 craft foam that's three millimeters thick from eBay. That cost about eight pounds for two sheets plus shipping. We've got some sticky back Velcro just to seal up the tube and attach it to the secondary cage so it remains on the telescope. And we've got a tape measure and some sharp scissors. One other thing, we need, and I've got that on my computer here, is a calculator, a little bit of maths, so we can get our measurements correct. How do we know what size we need this to fit this telescope perfectly? The couple of things we need to bear in mind is we need to know how long to cut it so it fits on the inside, all the way around that cage, and all the way inside that tube perfectly. So we're going to use pi d basically to work out the circumference. So if I measure the inside diameter, we can see that's six and three quarter inches or 170 millimeters, 170 millimeters by 3.142. And that gives us 534 millimeters. Now, before we go ahead and use that figure to cut the foam, we need to also bear in mind that we're going to be adding a little bit extra for the Velcro to be attached. So if we add an extra 25 millimeters or one inch, we're going to be looking at about 560. There's one thing I've not used that I need, and that's a pen. <laughs> Okay, so we've now got a pen so we can mark that. 560. And I've of course got a spare bit of foam just in case I make a complete mess of this. Just using the back of the tape measure to line all those marks up so I can just run a line across and hopefully I can cut along it and have a reasonably neat cut. Thank you. 
the next dimension we need to consider is from the secondary cage to just inside the tube. If we grab the tape measure, measure from the top of the secondary, it's just over a foot until we reach the start of the tube. So we just want a little bit of overlap so it just sits, the shroud just sits very neatly inside. But when we drop this whole thing down, it's not going to push that foam onto the primary mirror. So I think about 13 inches, or that's about 33 centimeters, should do the trick. Let's just check what dimension is which. So that's our 560 for the circumference. So we want to be on this dimension here and 13 inches or 33 centimeters. make sure there's no bits on it so when you put it in the tube nothing's going to fall on the primary mirror so the next step would be to basically form the tube with the velcro what we don't want to do is the mistake I've made before and put the other the fuzzy bit on there because when you seal when you fold it over you find that the fuzzy bits on the wrong side so now we need to flip it over and make sure we put it on this side so it forms a tube when we fold it over again just press that down so it makes a really good glued contact with the foam is really difficult when you've got double jointed thumbs. And just try and make sure it's the same kind of diameter all the way down. Okay, that looks pretty good. The last task we need to do is attach this top part of the shroud to the inside of the secondary cage, making sure we cut out three little slots for the spider veins. This could be the tricky bit actually. I might thread it down into the tube. For cosmetic reasons, I'm probably just gonna line it up so this seam coincides with one of the truss rods. If we put the tube horizontal, we're not gonna drop these scissors down the tube that are gonna land on the primary mirror. So that's probably the safest way of going about things. Hope you can see that on camera, but that's sitting nicely all the way around the inside diameter of the telescope. One final job is to cut a little bit of Velcro to make sure this is attached nicely to the inside of that secondary cage. We've now got a sliding dew shield that slides in and out, as you can see. The only slight caveat is where the screws for this dovetail bar attach on the inside of the tube. We're getting caught on the dew shield. So you can see that plate where it's getting kind of stuck on. And that's why we're having to just sort of tap it on the side when we're pushing down, just so it clears that and then collapses all the way down. We're not impinging on the light path to the mirror. So this modification isn't to any detriment at all. It's only gonna help increase the contrast and stop that secondary mirror getting dewed up. So one more demonstration, pulling it out. That looks really good, I think. Okay, guys, I'm going to own, own up to something now. I forgot that I need to cut round the foam where the focuser is, because like when you, when you look down it, it's pitch black because the foam's in the way. 
also I initially went a bit too close to the end with the foam so I couldn't get the dust cap back on so I've moved that back a little bit just to allow a bit of room for this to sit back in there okay so that was two simple modifications you can do to your heritage 130 150p or one sky 130p any comments leave them below if you enjoyed the content consider following along and hitting that subscribe button and remember try not to get velcro stuck to your foot